Hi, everybody. My name is John Craig. I am host of Converge Conversations, where we talk to artists about art. Let's get started. Today on Converge Conversations, we're going to be talking to Deborah Sperry about her recent exhibition, The New York Years, Paintings and Drawings by Deborah Sperry, 1970 to 1982. Hey, Deb, it's really great to have you here. Why don't you tell the audience a little bit about your background, where you came from, where you ended up? Let's talk about it a little bit. Okay, hi John, that's, that's really great. Um, I think the first thing I would want the audience to know is that um, I grew up uh, an army brat. My father was stationed um, in Europe and in Asia, and for, gosh, the most couple decades, first decade of my life at least, we were all over the world, so I saw a lot of pretty interesting things. Um, we ended up in Denver when my father retired from the Army, and I went to high school and college in Colorado. Um, my second year of college, my parents divorced, and I was out on my own then. College stopped, and I started a job um, in downtown Denver at a restaurant called The Vault, which was actually in the basement of an old bank building. And I worked there for a while, and I belonged to an artist co-op and had studio space there. And when in thinking about what I wanted the rest of my life to be, I decided that the, the best place at that time to be and be an artist was in New York City. So I made plans and saved up about $500. And with three other young women, we drove somebody else's car to Boston and we shared expenses, the gas and hotel rooms and um, drove through multiple snowstorms in January um, to get to New York. I, once we got to Boston, I took um, a train from Boston to New York and I arrived in New York in the middle of the night and took a cab down to the name and address of the people at my co-op had given me that they knew this guy who was willing to put me up for a while until I could kind of figure out what I was doing in New York. So um, I... When, when was that? That was in January uh, 1970. What was the city like when you got there? Um, it was a really unusual time in New York. The city was very run down. There was a lot of garbage on the streets. There was social unrest. You know, the riots in Newark and other places across the country had happened just a few years before that. Um, so it, it, the, there was a, it, it was a difficult time for the city. It was kind of down on its heels, I would say. How, how long were you there before you actually started to work, started to paint? Well, <laughs> funny, I, I arrived in the middle of the night at this guy's apartment and um, he was very surprised because it turned out it was a big joke that the people at the co-op had done on him and me. And so I was there a day or two and I called another friend and they gave me the number for Richard and Linda Harris, who happened to live up on 110th Street in Amsterdam, and he was um, an instructor out at Queens College. And I called them, and I went up and had dinner with them, and they were, I think they literally saved me. Um, I slept on their couch for three months until I think I strained their marriage, and they um, found me a room in a, a women's boarding house on 88th Street in Riverside. And that's where I moved, and I really started doing artwork once I moved to the boarding house. And, you know, it was kind of lonely. Um, I was able to finally find a waitress job. Um, I found a job at a east side sort of pub-like place called Friar Tuck, which was on 3rd Avenue, and I got the lunchtime hours. So it wasn't the prime evening stuff where they were really busy and made money but I was there during lunchtime and I was able to you know earn enough to get by and one of the uh, people that I met while I was working there 
was Norman, and Norman was a bartender, and um, we became friends, and he then shortly left and went to um, a new job as manager and head bartender at a place called Barney Google's, which was on 86th Street between 2nd and 3rd. What, what was Barney Google's? Well, Barney Google's was a nightclub, bar, slash, live entertainment disco. And it was sort of interesting. It had been a beer garden, uh, a German beer garden, uh, in its previous life. And it still had some of the vestiges of that, you know, lattice work, decor on the walls. And uh, it just had a f the feel of what an outdoor cafe would look like in the front. And in the back, they had set it up in tiers uh, for viewing the stage. And it was a, a sort of interesting place. So artists perform there? Well, a lot of, um, during that time, Studio 54 was also opening, and they were on uh, West 54th Street, and CBGB's downtown was also music venue and disco. There were, there were a lot of things like that going on. And so they decided that the focus, music focus, would be on R&B and Latin music. So uh, it was a very different crowd. And on Friday and Saturdays, um, they booked live acts like Sister Sledge, Sam and Dave. I even saw Ike and Tina Turner perform there wow. during those years. That must have been something to see. It was wild. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Uh, what did you do at Barney Google's? I was a cocktail waitress. And uh, spoiler alert, uh, this was when feminism was on the rise. And uh, what we wore as a, a sort of uniform was a ballet leotard, fishnet stockings, high-heeled shoes, and a little black apron that was tied in a bow in the back. And uh, in this costume... Very lovely. Oh, yeah. It was really sexist. Oh, what was your process? I mean, you, you have sketches and drawings and then later paintings. How did you do that? Well, you know, it was a nightclub, and... Things in a nightclub don't really get started until about 10 o'clock at night. The first show on weekends wasn't until like 11 o'clock, and then it was open until 4 o'clock in the morning. So there was a lot of waiting around. And during the waiting around times, I would do sketches in my little book to keep busy. I just didn't want to stand there doing nothing. So um, I did sketches. I had little index cards I would work on some days, and other days I'd have the sketchbook with me. And I would um, take them back. I'd make notes about what I was seeing, and I took them back to my studio, and I would start to work on compositions. And the paintings are not one particular sketch, but they would be a composite of, you know, different days, different things that I saw, um, and trying to capture the... Um, the atmosphere more than anything of what this place was. It had the sort of beer garden look, which was a little weird. It had theatrical lighting. It had mirror balls that were turning and sending shards of light. Everybody was smoking, so it was very smoky. Um, it was just a very nightclub-y thing that you, you, and I tried to capture in, the, in my sketches and drawings and paintings the, the sense of the heat and movement and, and uh, atmosphere of the place. Well, you know, Converge, obviously you know as well as I do, the, has been pretty much photographically related in its exhibitions. And there are two techniques that you use which are very photographic in their styles. One is the deep focus and the other is flash drag. And you see that a lot in these paintings and these sketches. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, I've described the atmosphere. It was, you know, kind of smoky and there was a lot of light moving around. And so if, if you think about how one sees things, you know, you look at something and maybe the smoke would clear for a minute and you would see it way in the back of, uh, on the other side and then you would see something else. And so as I'm putting these sketches together and, and the paintings, the compositions, I would be thinking about how to 
give a sense of the feel of the place. And in order to do that, you just can't always have the one thing that's in front of you. You have to have the things in the distance and the things in, in mid-range and uh, to, to give it, I think, um, a better feel for what it was actually like. Yeah, a lot of these paintings that you did were, are very dynamic, very colorful. There's a lot of motion, but there are a couple in there uh, from the Barney Miller's series. That, That's Barney Google's. Uh, I'm sorry, Barney Google's series. I Barney Miller's the TV show, right, John. Right. <laughs> Right, which I still miss to these days, yeah. which was on about the same time as the yeah. uh, as Barney Googles was going. But uh, you had um, you had these two paintings in the show, which are much more intimate. Uh, one is the look, and the other is the pickup. Uh, it is a big contrast compared to the the lively, colorful movements. Why don't you talk a little bit about those paintings? Well, the, you know, so yeah, I mean, it's the bar scene, right? You, you're, you're in a bar and it had, Barney Googles had a really large, big, big front bar where, you know, 50, 60 people could be sitting at, at stools and then there were, you know, all the people, the little tables with the little candles and it's a bar scene and people are there to be seen, to make friends, to get a date to, you know, the, all the things that people do in the bar scenes. So while I'm waiting around, um, you know, waiting for the action in the back and the show and all of that, you actually do see uh, people sitting there trying to pick each other up and drinking. And um, so that's, you know, it's just another part of the scene that was there. That's all. It, it, it's not that different. It's just a, a closer look mm -hmm. at, at that. You have other work in the show. They're portraits and self-portraits. Uh, also window shots from your apartment. Why don't you talk about the self-portrait a little bit that opens up the show? Go. Um, that self-portrait is sort of interesting. I would work during the day in my studio and um, at night usually I worked. So on weekends or whenever I had a day off at night, I would be painting at night. Um, the, my loft on 14th Street and 2nd Avenue had 12 foot ceilings and great big arching windows. And I could see, you know, right across 14th Street and I would see a guy across the street playing his saxophone. Um, and I painted him into this painting. Um, he actually saw me painting um, and uh, he lurked on a corner one one evening. On he watched when I was going to work, and he introduced himself to me, and we became pretty good friends. Well, that's pretty interesting. Why you're from across the street at each other? Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, peering at each other that's across the right. street. That's right. Uh, the other the other one I'd like you to talk a little bit a little bit about is the 14th Street window sh uh, painting that you have in the show, which is early in the show. Um, that was a, another painting out my studio window onto 14th Street. And um, you have to understand that from the moment I arrived in New York, um, I just fell in love with the place. It, it was perfect. It was my town, my home. I, I never for a minute felt, even though it was going through a lot of difficulties financially and in other ways, that this wasn't the place I absolutely belonged. And so the street scenes and winter scenes on the street and ev everything about the place intrigued me. And I, I tried to do as many paintings of the streets as I could. How had New York changed in the time that you were there? Oh, it was going through a huge period of gentrification. Um, uh, downtown Soho area became gentrified in that time. Many art galleries opened. The Broom Street Bar was where artists hung out. And, uh, you know, all the yuppies started moving in. And then the artists moved, um, you know, further downtown into Tribeca, where I... Uh, had a loft down on Chambers and Church for a number of years, and um, 
our artists kept moving out to Brooklyn and to Jersey City and you know the gentrification followed the artists would move in and then you know people from Wall Street would follow <laughs> so it was uh, on the upward tick I would say very much so all right and the final question that we have is the final image in the show is the painting the wedding why don't you tell us a little bit about that particular painting um it's kind of recording the um the wedding that my first marriage to uh, an italian uh, guy from an italian family and uh, it was the wedding and the reception was in my loft on 14th street and uh, all of his Italian relatives showed up in mass, and when they weren't talking to each other, they were running down stairs to place bets at the OTB, and then running over to Little Italy to buy pastries, and then coming back, and it, you know, the party went on all day and half the night. Um, so I wanted to memorialize that that day. That was towards the end of your stay, correct? Right. Within a, within a year and a half, two years, uh, we had moved out to New Jersey where his family had a, a business, a die casting business. And I think I mourned the loss of my city for two or three years after moving to New Jersey and realizing that I probably would never get back there as a place to live. Well, Deborah Sperry, thank you very much. Oh, well, you're welcome. It was kind of fun talking about it again. Yeah, it was uh, really interesting after seeing these paintings originally, th for me, 30 years ago, to finally give them a place to live. Um, I think they're beautiful. Uh, thanks. I was really surprised when I found them in the basement. Um, I had Most of them were rolled up and I had a portfolio that was hiding behind something else and when I pulled it out and started looking at the drawings again and at, at the paintings I, I thought you know that that was really a, a period of time that was very unique. Um, so I was I was pleased that I'd saved them. Thanks again. Okay, we'll thank you. you soon. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. Converge Conversations is available in a podcast, in a video podcast on YouTube, or in a PDF magazine. Check the links below.